show up and there's a dead woman on the floor who is subsequently identified to you as a supermodel. She's naked. She's been raped and strangled. Branded into her forehead as a letter B. Now, a week earlier, you had another dead supermodel with the letter L burned into her forehead. What do you do? Who do you call? Well, what's going through your mind? Task force would take that over. Good, because guess what? It was your sister who was the first dead supermodel, so you're not going to let anybody take this over. What do you do? Okay. If it's that personal... I'd go to my boss, toss him my shield, say I quit, and I'm working this on my own. Now we're talking. And then I'd put on the ring I'd been saving, which enables me to travel through space and time, adopting any identity I need. Get to work. You ready for this? Two people crucified in an apartment over on Allen Street. One of them, DOA. Crucified? That's what the desk sergeant told me. That's all he had. You and Connie are up. Great. You hear about this? Yeah. You're crazy. Who called it in? The guy nailed to the bench, Dennis Clancy. Dragged it over to the phone and dialed with his tongue. What's he doing still nailed? Well, EMS didn't have the right equipment to try to take the nails out, so emergency services on their way with bolt cutters. Who's the DOA? Girlfriend, Lori Bailey. She's a stripper. Keeps the safe here with money. A couple of Russian guys came by. He was babbling. Uh-huh. Dennis, we're the detectives investigating what happened. These Russian guys. You never seen him before? We got in an argument. You and the girlfriend? Yeah, she said she was going to call a couple of guys. She meant the club to come kick my ass. I told her to go ahead. She's always making threats like that. Hang in there. Oh, God, I didn't know she called, but these two guys show up. How long is it going to take to get these damn nails out? They'll be here in a minute. Keep breathing deep. So the Russian guys show up. Yeah, but by then she calmed down like she usually does, and she told them to take off. But they start asking, where's the safe? Where's she keep her money? And they think I know, but I didn't. I, I knew she had a safe, but I didn't know the combination. And these animals get out the hammer and nails. <laughs> I'm out of here. Dad, I'll still hang tough. I'll we'll talk to you more in a minute. Uh, 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 Party was got shot. Damon Upchurch doesn't look like he's gonna make it. What's the occasion? Uh, the guy's a rapper. Apparently, this is his record release party. Anybody see anything? Uh, victim's older brother over here, Adrian. Uh -huh. Adrian, let's go. You got a sec? Look, I don't know who did it. No, we got more yeah. questions than that. Well, it's gonna wait because I ain't even my brother. All right, when things settle down, we'll have a radio car bring it to our office. All right, come on. Hang Nikki. I'm right here, man. Sipwitz and Clark. 15th Detective Squad. Any information, we'll keep it confidential. You don't even have to give your name. When the shooting occur? Half hour ago. It was an after-hours party. This upchurch wraps under the name Jinxie, right? You heard of him? Yeah. I went to the academy with a guy who grew up with him. Who threw this thing? Jinxie's manager, uh, Marty Torelli. Marty? It's your party, huh? Yeah, for Jinxie. You see anything? No, unfortunately not. You got any money? Yeah, maybe a couple hundred. No, in the bank, Marty. Because somebody's going to have to put up a reward to get these people's mouths moving. I'll absolutely get behind that. What? Yeah. Did you see the invites? No. Found on the ground. Come inside. Celebrate the release of Jinxie's new album, Hollow Point. Come help set it off with the fattest... This is ridiculous. Now read the bottom. Oh, man. Junior. <laughs> Who's your buddy you went to the academy with? Marcus Hodges, what? Security by NYPD. What'd you get? Dick. Any word on the victim? He just went out of the picture. His brother, Adrian. We're gonna need a radio car to bring him in from Bellevue. I'll take care of that. And what's this I'm hearing about uh, security at the party being provided by the NYPD? Uh, we're looking into it. We don't know if it's a joke or what. Yeah, uniforms said they didn't see any security when they responded. The manager of the DOA paid for the party, but he said the DOA was in charge of the details. Any word from him, Marcus Hodges? He's on the job. He's in the coffee room. Marcus. Hey, what's up, John? How you doing? Good. It's my partner, Andy Sipwitz. Hey. So, you heard about Jinxie? Yeah. Invite for the party said security by NYPD. Know anything about it? So you were there? Yeah. Were you in charge? So what do I do? How about telling us what you know, for starters? Well, I didn't see anything. It was packed, it was loud, I heard shots, and then it was pandemonium. How many other cops you had working the party? Six, but they're all good guys, and if they would have seen anything, they would have done something. We're gonna need their names. 
Well, so they're gonna get jammed up? If the case goes down quick, other units are less apt to get involved. That stupid ass invitation. I didn't know they print that. Is that what you're regretting? Getting found out? But you never moonlighted before? I never ran from a crime scene. Look, this whole thing jumped off quick, okay? I got my boys I grew up with over here. I'm responsible for fellow cops working off duty without permission. Marcus, you need to tell us everything. Look, someone came up to me before they split. They said Fury did it. Now, how much truth to that, I don't know. Fury the rapper? Yeah, Derek Glass. Him and Jinxie got a feud going on. Is there anything else you're not telling us? No, nah, that's it. All right, we're gonna need the names of the cops working for you last night. I'll run this to Derek Glass. Make sure the DOA's brother's coming in from the hospital. DOA? Jinxie died? Yeah, a little while ago. Oh, my God. Seated the head. Where were you when your brother got shot? At the bar. You see anything? Nope. You hear anything for anybody? Nope. You know a guy named Fury? Derek Glass? Why, sure. I know Furry. You and your brother have a beef with him? Come to think of it, yeah, we do. What's the beef over? It's over Furry being a store-bought wannabe thug who was raised out in the burbs. But then he started acting all hard, trying to copy Jinxie's style to try to move records. You guys mix it up in the past? About a month ago, we do a concert. In the back of the stage, we put up this big picture of Furry when he was in this candy-ass boy band car ready to go. The genie pants, the high-top fades, the stupid-ass grins. Oh, man. And I guess word got back to Furry, and he apparently didn't like that. Which was too bad for his bitch ass. You see Fury last night? Yeah, he crashed it. Was he involved in the shooting? I don't know. You don't want to get in the middle of this, Adrian. Let us handle it. Handle what? Justice. Justice? <laughs> you got yours, and I got mine. They're the same. Oh, I don't think so. You got kids? Yeah. Did your brother leave kids behind? Then do it for them. Go home, be with your family, and stay out of it. You get who did this, and I'll stay out of it. We will. May not be overnight, but we will. Meantime, you go home and you wait till you hear from us. All right. Victim got lucky. Uh, where they nailed him didn't break any bones. They're testing for nerve damage down at Bellevue, though. His girlfriend, the DOA, was a stripper at Jimbo's clown room over on 3rd. These Russians, they bring the hammer and nails with them? No. Got him out of the DOA's toolbox. So who got nailed first? Boyfriend did. The girlfriend still wouldn't give up the combination, so they nailed her. Still wouldn't give it, so the perps ripped the safe out of the wall and took it. Shot her on the way out. She sits there getting nails driven through her hands rather than give up stripping money? Yeah. How much was in the safe? Boyfriend didn't know. Why didn't the perp shoot the boyfriend, too? Well, the boyfriend says one of the perps fired shots at both of them, hitting the girlfriend and just missing him, but he played dead. You find a bullet hole where the perp missed? Yeah, in the wall, right where the boyfriend was. All right, bring in whoever runs Jimbo's. I'll call the FBI, see if they got any patterns on Russians with hammers. A crucified stripper, are you serious? Don't let yourself. You gotta fill me in later. What'd the brother say? Nothing, but he was there, he knows something. Any luck finding Fury? This is Derek Glass, right? Yeah, and he's who we need to talk to. Metavoy and Jones just found him at some girl's apartment. They're bringing him in. All right. No word yet on what that NYPD security thing was all about? The uh, cop who was in, Marcus Hodges, he was working security. And boss, I probably should have told you earlier, but I went to the academy with him and he knows he screwed up. So he was there when the shots were fired? He didn't see anything. He panicked and left. But he's hopping out now. Yeah, he ain't a bad guy. I, I really don't want to see him get hurt. Well, if all he did was leave after the shots, then it's not a problem. But if he's hindering or obstructing, we're going to have to notify internal affairs. He's not. Okay. There were some other cops working security last night. We're going to hit him up. Keep me up there. That sucks about Jinxie. Armed response is an outrageous CD. Yeah. So you listen to that rap mumbo jumbo? Heard some hip hop before, sure. Oh, so it's hip hop now. You know, not everybody's still listening to, uh, you know, Little Louie and the Shoe Shiners, Andy. <laughs> so you know this guy Mark is pretty good. Yeah, we haven't been in contact much since the academy, but uh, he's a good guy. Enough to vouch for him. I was taking the subway back to Queens to get my car, and there's these three guys hassling a woman on the train. Now, this is the same day our instructor went over how, while you're in the academy and you see an incident, you should dial 911. You're not supposed to be taking police action. So you get involved. Yeah, and then these three guys turn on me. 
Now, I don't have my gun, obviously, because I'm still in the academy, and for a second there, I'm wondering if I'm going to be taking some lumps here. Marcus, I knew him from my class, but I didn't know he was on the train. Right when the fists start flying, he's right there backing me up. So, yeah, I can vouch for him. Good. Because you're out on a limb now. See, Derek. Show up at Jinxie's party last night? Nope. <laughs> First thing out of your mouth is a lie, Derek. That ain't good. Where were you? <laughs> Black police man. Black police man. Cuffing his own people fast as he can. Answer the question, Derek. I was with one of my females, man. The girl whose apartment we picked you up at? Nah, different one. What's her name? Deandra, Deandra, starts with a D, I know that. Yeah, we got witnesses, we know you had the party last night. Black police mans, hugging up on the mayor, black blood on his hands. This coming from a guy whose contribution to society is rapping about bitches and hoes and gold rims. Yo, I guess mine's in the music game, son, that's all. I ain't holding my people down. You got kids out there robbing and killing to get those material things you're flaunting, Fury. Yeah, well, I ain't locking brothers up, brother. There it you need to account for where you were last night. And girls with no names ain't gonna cut it. Okay, maybe I did stop by Jinxie's party. But it was whack, cause he's a bitch, so I was out. Me and my boys. What was your argument over? Ain't no argument going on, man. Jinxie and this crew give you a hard time for being in that boy band when you were younger? I'm thinking you're soft, maybe they called you, uh, furry? <laughs> they pissed you off last night, you do something about it? His lawyer called and shut us down. It's on record. All right. We have enough to arrest him? No, not yet. Can we hold him for a while? The lawyer's on his way right now. Okay, come on. Take off, Derek. We'll be in touch later if we need anything. Black police man. Now, you know, I'm glad your lawyer called, so now I can tell you what's true. You ought to. Everybody says you ought to. If you got a problem with that, then jump on up. Yeah, I thought so. It's a thank you letter from the Ku Klux Klan. All right, come on. Come on. What? Your bodyguards ain't here to finish your fight? No. Take a seat. So how long you own Jimbo's clown room, Joseph? Three years. You manage the place, too? Yes. So you're not an absentee owner? No, what? You know what's going on in your club. It's my business. Of course I know what's going on. You know Lori Bailey? Yeah. She's my best dancer. Use the name Coco. Something wrong? Her name came up in an investigation. What guys does Lori hang out with? She's a girlfriend for this guy, Dennis. Used to be DJ at my club. What Russian guys does she hang out with? I don't know. Part of this investigation involves two Russian guys who were at Lori's apartment. Why is this my problem? Where else would she meet Russian guys, Joseph? It's a big city. You got Russian men working at your club? Of course. Family. I have a brother, two cousins, but they don't talk to girls outside club. I don't allow. Joseph, you're going to tell us who Lori was hanging out with, or we're going to get the fire department, the board of health, the state liquor authority, vice, down there every night. Back in Russia, it was easier. When there's a problem with police, we work it out with money. You want to get in some real trouble? You keep going in that direction. I'm saying we do that there, not here. Of course not. The names of the Russian guys Lori was hanging around. Well, you're going to start seeing a lot more of us. I don't know, but I ask around. You do that. We're going to need a list of all employees faxed over within the hour. I do that. Is that one of the Russians who crucified the stripper? Not much on the owner of the club. He's going to ask around. Boyfriend's saying his girlfriend was nailed to the table first, then shot later, right? Right. Well, he's lying. And me saying it's the other way around. Shot first, then nailed. Moon's post-mortem. I called. The boyfriend's still at Bellevue. Cop there asked him who he wants notified. This guy says tell his wife. The boyfriend, Dennis Clancy, he's married? Yeah, to so Betty Ann Clancy. They live over on 13th Street. Did you uniform notify her? No. anything boss dave how long we've known each other it's going on a week now seems longer doesn't it yeah it sure does i think we're at that point where we can be honest with each other don't you think i would think so i would hope so good 
You're starting to really piss me off, Dave. I'm sorry to hear that. Despite my prior warning to concentrate on your work, you failed to do that. Now, my guess is that you consider yourself destined for greater things. I wish you luck in that regard, Dave. I really do. But in trying to convince others and yourself that you're not going to be answering phones for the rest of your life, you overcompensate and come across like a real ass. Maybe it's more of a personality conflict, Lieutenant, because I've worked in a lot of other commands. Got along with everyone great. Where? In the old record section, the pistol license bureau? This is a detective squad. We do police work here. You're responsible for getting information to us regarding serious business. Yeah, I'm aware of that. And I believe I've been getting you that information. This time, it's not a discussion, Dave. From now on until John gets back, I want that computer put away. I want your cell phone off, and I don't want you pumping the detectives for information, for material. You do your job, or hit the road. Well, you're the boss. That's right. Good See ya. All right. We, uh, talked to Marcus Hodges. Okay. So you were doing security for him last night at Jinxie's party? Yeah. Were you there when Jinxie got shot? Yeah. See anything? No. So you're still on 18 month probation, huh, Terrence? That's right. You remember how probation works? Yeah. One phone call and you're fired. You want to stay a cop? I really do. You're getting one chance right here to tell us what happened. You hold back anything and I'll find out if you do that I'm making that phone call. What has Marcus told you? We're not looking for questions from you, Terrence. Marcus wouldn't know what happened. Why? As soon as I heard the shots, I turned and Marcus is standing where Jinxie dropped. I mean, it was a madhouse. I ran toward the shots and I see Marcus and Jinxie's brother, Adrian. They're both running after the perp. I got boxed in and lost them. Did you talk to Marcus before you split? Yeah, he told all of us working security to leave, told us that we were never there, that he would handle it. Did Marcus cook up a story for you guys to tell? No, he just said this was on him and to get lost. All right. Was there gonna be a phone call made? Not from us. Police, open up. What? Just open the door. Penny and Clancy? Yeah? Why? I need to come in and talk to you. About what? Open the door. Let me see your badges again. We're investigating a complaint regarding Lori Bailey. You know her? My husband does. Hey, you got questions about Lori? Okay, but I didn't say you could snoop around. Your husband's Dennis Clancy, right? Yes. Yeah. How does your husband know Lori? I'd like to know what the investigation is. Betty Ann, we're cutting you some major slack right now because I'm pretty sure you got a substance or two in here you probably shouldn't, so start meeting us halfway. Dennis has been sleeping with her. Pretty much shacking up. Apparently with your knowledge. If you had a couple hours, I could tell you what I'm up against, but I doubt you'd want to hear it. Dennis got you hooked, but he makes the money he cops for both of you. You're trying to kick, but meanwhile, you're stuck with what you can get. Basically. Your husband have any big debts out there? I don't know. I don't ask. Is Dennis involved in this? We don't know yet. Where does Dennis get his money? You working anywhere since he stopped DJing at Jimbo's? Some freelance DJ work at parties. And he's apprenticing now to become a piercing artist. Where? Red Devil Tattoo. Who's the apprentice under? Foss. Foss Miller. They, uh, they just pierce ears and belly buttons or... Everything. You name it. Good for you. Last week, Dennis pierced my... We got it. <laughs> Thanks. We've been getting more information, Marcus. Anybody give up Fury as the shooter? No. But the information we're getting is that you were right there when it happened. No, I was close by, but I didn't see nothing. I don't understand what the problem is. I mean, don't you want to help arrest Fury for killing your friend? Hell yes, I do. And if I could... All right, quit surround Marcus. You keep waiting to find out what we know before you toss us another crumb, and it stops now. But you all starstruck because you got some famous friends, so now you're their errand boy? I've been friends with Jinxie and Adrian a long time, a lot longer than I've been a cop. You know anything about friends? Yeah. You got one standing in front of you right here who vouched for you all day. And it's the only reason that you're not answering these questions to internal affairs right now. 
So you siding with them, huh? You turning your back on being a cop? I was there. I hear shots. I spin around and Jinx is going down. A couple of seconds later, I see Fury running with a gun in his hand. So I go after him, but I lost him because I got knocked down by everybody swarming the door. Why not tell us that earlier? I figured whoever caught the case will find out enough on their own to arrest Fury without any of us having to get involved. Because there was more than a thousand people there. I was not an eyewitness to the shooting. I don't know. I'm telling you now. Did Adrian see the shooting? I don't think so, but Adrian was running after Fury with me. He had a gun. He pulled it out and fired a few shots at Fury. He's on parole. Oh, so Adrian tells you to stay out of it because he fired a gun and he'd go back in the joint or to stay out of it so he can retaliate against Fury on his own. No, he gave me his word he wouldn't. So Adrian's telling you what to do. I let him down, man. They hired me to keep things cool and Jinxie ends up getting killed right in front of me. I could barely look Adrian in the eye. All right. Since uh, Fury is lawyered up now, I'll try and get the DA to authorize arrest on a gun charge. That's it. That's everything, John. This Sunday in... How you doing, ladies? We're good. You Foss? I'm Foss. You have a Dennis Clancy working for you? Working for me? I mean, off and on. It's more he just hangs out. You know Lori Bailey? No. Something wrong here? Craziest thing happened. We got a complaint from someone who was trying to get a piercing through their hand. It got all screwed up, apparently, but the complaint mentioned Dennis as the guy who did the piercing. What an idiot. Did it happen here? Hell no. This is a legitimate shot. Did you teach Dennis how to pierce a hand? Is that what he's saying? Did you? All right. Dennis was asking me how I would do it. I tell him it's damn near impossible and dangerous. He keeps on me. What if you had to? So I told him if someone had a gun to my head, I'd do it between the middle and forefinger, just above the knuckles. I mean, we were talking about to just kill time. I mean, I thought we were killing time. Did he mention he was planning on doing it? No, not to me. So you had nothing to do with this, Foss? Because the other shoe's dropping here, and now would be the time to tell us. No, and Dennis is an idiot for trying. If you see him before me, tell him not to come around here again. So, what do you say while we're here? Not in this lifetime. We have an eyewitness who puts a gun on Fury right after he heard shots fired. But no eyewitness who sees Fury shoot the DOA. No. And Fury's lawyered up. All we need is for you to authorize the arrest on a weapons charge. We'll take it from there. This is a high-profile murder. I have to run it by my bureau chief. Then run it. Who's the witness? Cop. Great. Who's working security off the books and who we'd like to leave out of it? I'll just tell my boss you have a reliable witness. Sooner than later. I know. Hey. How you doing? Better. A lot better. It's like the fog's cleared. And you've been through a lot, no doubt. I finally feel like my head's on straight with work. Good. I know how important that is to you. After what I've been through, I realize that it's not as important as other things. I need to get on this, though. Sure. Are we all right? Yeah, we're all right. After I get caught up, we'll get together? Yeah, you got it. Hey, John. Counselor. What the hell are you doing back? Uh, the trip got cut short. How's everything going, Dave? Dandy. What happened? I'm still not ready to talk about it. Brought some gifts back for everyone, though. Uh, something go wrong on the safari? Oh, we never got off the plane in Africa. What happened? We were flying to Paris to catch our connecting flight to Africa when an elderly man suffered a heart attack. So we had to make what they call a medical diversion landing in Iceland, which is what they call a non-planned international destination. So we had to wait there to be refueled and reprepped. How long that take? Two days. Stuck in the airport? A military base. It was a, a military base, currently abandoned. Uh, and then we finally got to Paris. And after waiting it to go for eight hours, we finally made it to Kenya. But we landed in the middle of an attempted coup, apparently. So, 16 hours on the tarmac there, then back to Paris. And finally, Ray and I made it back home. Still talking to each other and very much glad to be alive. But, boo-hoo-hoo, -hoo, right? <laughs> Forget all that. Uh, I came by to bring you what I brought back. But please forgive how tacky they are, as I only had access to airport gift shops. John, you got a sec? Good to see you, Lieutenant. Welcome back. Thank you. 
I, I hope you golf. Listen, I know you still got a couple weeks left on your vacation, but uh, if you want to come back early. Is uh, Dave not working out? When can you start again? Tomorrow. I owe you. It's good to be back. Feeling up all right there, Mr. Clancy? Still in a lot of pain. I can imagine. We uh, talked to the medical examiner. They've established that Lori was shot first, then hammered to the coffee table, which differs a little from what you told us. Oh, really? Well, that's interesting, because I was there, and she was definitely nailed first and then shot. I'm curious. Down at Red Devil Tattoo, when you were shooting it with Foss and how he pierced the palm of the hand, did you ask how much it would hurt? I mean, is it more painful than you thought it would be? What the hell are you talking about? Okay, then try this, Dennis. Since a guy can't nail both his hands to a bench and make a safe disappear, that tells us someone else was in on it with you. You give us that someone, or you get charged with the whole deal. Murder, robbery. I didn't do any of that. All right, then get in. Why? Get in. Look, two Russian guys came Dennis, through. this is reality now, okay? You're going up for the murder and robbery of your girlfriend, Lori, unless you give us who was in on it. No. No. Get up. No. Get up. Uh, going in. Uh, all right. Thank Brenda. How do you know him? We owe the same dealer. Hank nailed you to the bench. Yeah. And I thought for sure seeing me get nailed would make her give it up, but she didn't. Shows me how much I meant to her. But Lori didn't tell you guys the combination to the safe, so you tell Hank to shoot her? No, look. Hank was getting pissed because she wouldn't give it up. So like a moron, he says, Dennis, talk to her. And him knowing my name, she figures I set it up. So she starts really screaming, and he gets pissed right back, and he shot her. So he pulls the safe out, hammers her to the coffee table, and throws a shot into the wall above your head to fit the new story. Yeah. Where are we going to find Hank Grenda? Look, I didn't shoot her. I didn't touch her. The plan, the way it was supposed to go down, is, is I was going to take all the pain. Not Lori. Nothing was going to happen to her. Look, I loved her. Yeah? Where's Hank? Am I making too much noise? Put that down, Hank. I want to explain. You don't want to put that down first. Huh. Get your hands on the bench. It's my safe. I, I forgot the combo. Yeah, you got it, Hank. What I did for Marcus, I'd do it again. Yeah. I mean, I heard you, though, about uh, going out on a limb. Just that I've gone to bed for guys I thought I knew before, and I ended up getting burned. If you stick yourself out there too far and it plays out wrong, you end up getting screwed right along with them. So what would you have done in this situation? Same thing you did. Nobody's looking out for cops but cops. Yep. This is him. Let's take them when they get in the car. Copy that. Yeah, I'm fine. Let's go. Let's go, Adrian. Hold on, Derek. Help's coming. 15 squad. We got a 1013 at 6 in Bowery. People shot in the street and a 53. Purpose involved. Put a rush on the ambulance. My mom. All right. Vernon Glass. Fort Lee. Okay. Bus is on the way. Oh, hey. It's okay, Derek. It's okay. Hi, Rita. I was in the neighborhood. Uh, Connie McDowell. It's Leslie Walden. Leslie's handling my divorce. Nice to meet you. You got a minute? Sure. I'll update the boss. Okay. 
Uh, where's the lieutenant? Down in the captain's office. Apparently there was a drive-by shooting involving a suspect in the other case. Who? I don't know. I'm only here to give and take messages. The lieutenant did say he'd be back momentarily. What the hell's wrong with you? Today's my last day. So I'm spending it the way all government employees apparently should. Like a robot. Oh. Okay. When you deal with the divorce, emotions run high. People can get stubborn. Don't agree to get this over with quick. No. He's contesting the constructive abandonment. Why? I don't know. I spoke with Don's attorney. He's rejected all of our offers of division of property. So then what now? They're requesting a jury trial. <sighs> I don't believe this. That's probably a bluff from Don to try to get a better settlement. Better. I'm giving him everything he's entitled to, if not more. I'm not going after his money or the apartment. I just... I want what I came into the marriage with. I know, and I expressed very clearly to Don's attorney that Don's being unreasonable. How long does it take before it goes to a jury trial? Depends. Ballpark. Worst case, two years. So he's messing with me. He's trying. So then what's the next step, as far as you and I are concerned? Next step is we exchange financial disclosures with them. I mean, how much is this going to cost me? When you came to me, we both thought this would go quick, and therefore cheap. Obviously now, this could go on for a long time. Especially if Don doesn't calm down. How much? Normally I require a $10,000 retainer. I can get you four now. Okay. This is how Don's trying to get back at me. He knows I can't afford this. You've moved out? You got most of your stuff? Yeah. Start putting this behind you. Start getting on with your life. Let me do my job, and when it happens, it happens. I'll call you. Thanks. Okay, now, how'd you get the guy that's in the poke? Dennis Clancy, the boyfriend, gave up his accomplice, Hank Grenda. We busted in on Grenda at this garage, and he was in the process of trying to drill into the safe. He's a complete moat. Gave it right up. And Grenda's story matched the one the stripper boyfriend gave you? Yeah, exactly. So no rushes. No rushes. Good work. Everything wrap up down there? Yeah. Crime scene's taking photos. I'm mapping it out. Met a boy and Jones are on the way back. You guys all right? Yeah. Shipping out, Lieutenant. Okay. And I also want to let you know that I'll be taking some time off to finish this script I started about a serial killer centered around a detective squad. The people I've let read the first 20 pages are basically freaking out. Let me guess. The lieutenant's gonna be an ass. Yeah. I'm gonna make it. You'll see. Cheer up, Dave. Farewell. Peace and freedom. You done? Yep. Apparently, my services are no longer needed. Maybe they will somewhere else, right? I can only hope, right, Detective? Take care of yourself. Yeah, thanks. Bye, Dave. I heard. You want to catch something to eat tonight? <clears throat> uh, Theo's got a play date until eight. Sure. Case is closed. Uh, Fury's dead, Adrian's in custody for his murder, so you don't need to worry about this going to trial and you being pulled as a witness. I told Adrian not to do anything. I guess he didn't listen. It's the worst day of my life. I tried to do a favor, you know, for someone from the neighborhood. Yeah, well, you know, I think you're in the clear as far as internal affairs goes. What about your boss? Now you stand up. I don't see him doing anything. What about you? <sighs> what about me, Marcus? Were you asking if I'm going to turn you over to IAB? I'm asking if I lost your respect, if I lost you as a friend. I'd like to think that I would have done things different, but who knows? There was so much going on. I know what happened. Look, uh, I was going to resign, but I can't leave like this. So I'm going to stay on the job, make up for it. Okay. I get to get back in. Hey, I'm sorry. All right.
watching this animal show and uh, I point to the screen and I said, that's an ostrich. And Theo says, that's an emu. You believe that? Was it an emu? No, but the fact that he even knew what an emu is. He's a smart kid. Theo was asking when you're going to be coming by next. What do you want me to do? I can only make decisions based on what you tell me. And last time we talked about us, it sounded like it wasn't working for you. I know. I know what I said. I don't understand why you want to turn away from something that feels good. I got my son. He's my blessing. My second chance. I got my job. Anything more. Every time I try to reach out for something beyond that, it gets taken from me. That's where I feel I was going spending time with you. You can't live your life defensively like that. Sure you can. You don't have to, is what I'm saying. Okay, so what do you want to do? I want you in our life. Then let's just leave it at that, okay? Let's just agree to be in each other's lives and not label it past that. We'll keep it simple, because whatever this is or isn't, it works. Don't you think? Yeah. All right, then. <laughs>